Hey, Sava here, and thanks for joining us on part two. Yesterday, in part one, as a quick refresher, we really dove into how saving things into pieces when you're working in the browser or in the IDE can really compound your productivity over time. Uh, one of the things that we touched on was how pieces doesn't make you do the work when it comes to organization and contextualization. We go ahead and we enrich it with tags, descriptions, related links, titles, and so on, so that all you have to do is paste and you know that it's in pieces, deeply indexed, and available later in your workflow. The end result there is that you're going to save a lot, especially when you use pieces. Towards the end of part one, I mentioned how I have almost 400 things in pieces. And so today, in part two, what I'm going to cover is how we have powerful search, suggestion, and that drives reference and reuse workflows, increasing your productivity and saving you time as a developer. In part three, we're going to cover uh, how this looks in an enterprise setting or a small team setting. It doesn't really matter. When you compound the productivity at the individual level, this amounts to real gains at the team level, enterprise level, and beyond. Okay, jumping right in. So I'm going to go ahead and close down the browser here and pull pieces to the forefront. And I want to touch on something that I talked a little bit about towards the end of part one yesterday. And that's the two different layouts inside of pieces. Um, the first one you'll see here is the gallery view. And the gallery view is a, one that I use quite often, and it's really optimized so that you can see the entirety of the code snippet, its shape, and have some really robust syntax highlighting. But in addition to the gallery view, uh, we actually have the list view as well. And the list view is kind of this master detail view where you can see all of your snippets on the left and scroll them pretty easily. Um, but then on the right, you can see a bit of a snippet preview and a whole bunch of the context. So, you know, the descriptions, the suggested searches, the tags, the related links, it's all available right here. Uh, back over in the gallery view, I wanted to note on something that we spend a lot of time on at Pieces, and that is making sure that our app works in a multitude of form factors. And so if you go ahead and kind of reduce Pieces to a, a slim layout here, it's actually really great if you want to go ahead and add this next to your IDE and use this in workflow. Of course, we have our VS Code, IntelliJ, Chrome, and Obsidian plugins. I'll talk more about those in a bit. But if you want to have pieces right there in Workflow, feel free to use it in this mode. Um, and it's optimized for every view in our app. Gallery, list view, and some of the other views that I'll talk about shortly. I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this split view here because I want to take a look at two views that I use on a regular basis day to day. Those two views uh, tend to be the activity view and the global search view. So if I kind of zoom on down here, you'll see the workflow activity. Let me go ahead and enter into that and give you a rundown. The workflow activity view really serves as this place that's a chronological timeline where developers can pick up where they left off or backtrack through their workflow without having to go back to square one, search for something again, or go to the browser where they might have a ton of tabs or an endless list of visited sites. So as you can see in here, I have a bunch of reference events, copy events, top level metadata, and it's telling me about when these things are added, when these things are modified, and so on. But for me, I find myself using the reference only filter because I know that I don't want to have to remember the exact term or the exact phrase that I use to find something. I actually just want to come in here and say, hey, you know, a couple days ago, I was searching GitHub Actions cache, and I can jump to that snippet, view it in the list view, view it in the gallery view, or I can restore that search and search again. Um, but in addition to that, uh, I find this really, really powerful when complemented with global search. If you aren't finding something that was referenced recently in your workflow, you can go back to global search. And global search is really this offline Google, if you will, for all the things that you have saved into pieces. What we do is we index these things uh, using neural code search. And this represents the code you have saved, the context that's associated with it as an embedding. And then we can quickly traverse those embeddings and relate them to a natural language query to give you the right results at the right time. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to search for that GitHub Actions Clear Cache. GitHub Actions Clear Cache. And when I click Enter here, it's going to do a search. The search is actually entirely offline, and it's searching the things that you have saved. Right there, as you can see, my top five search results, I have the clear cache. I can look at that code. I can see how related it is to my current workflow productivity, um, and I can copy it to my clipboard. This is excellent, especially for quick commands like shell, PowerShell, or bash. Uh, but this also scales really nice in case you're looking for some reusable code that you might want to send to a colleague. 
For example, uh, I know in TypeScript, I use promise resolutions to make sure my asynchronous code is working properly. So I'll do that right here. And right away, it's gonna go ahead and give me a bunch of results, again, that are related to me. And the top ranking result is a promise resolution helper function. I can go ahead and look at that code snippet, copy it to my clipboard, and use it right in my IDE. So there it is, it's on my clipboard. I can jump back over, paste this in, and I can use it. Moving back over to pieces, I wanna get out of the desktop app and I wanna take you into the IDE where this capability of finding things, referencing them, and reusing them is 10x faster. So if you jump over to our VS Code plugin, um, you'll note we have a couple different ways to look at the things you have saved in pieces. You'll have all of your materials grouped by language and recency over on the left-hand side. For me, I think this works out for maybe a couple things you have saved, but I primarily find myself using the command palette to search for pieces at scale. So what I'm going to do is do command shift P in VS Code, search pieces, and search promise resolution. Right there it is. I can open that. I can look at it. I can visit some of the related links. I can see that Mac and myself are associated with it. Uh, and I can actually insert this at my cursor or autocomplete it while I'm typing. These things are all changeable in your settings, uh, but for me, I prefer to just do the preview. Go ahead and jump over to IntelliJ, where we can look at some of the similar functionality, but with a few extra goodies. I'll note super quick that I'm using IntelliJ IDEA, but we do support all of the IDEs that the JetBrains team puts out. And I'm gonna jump into a couple of the things that I just showed in the VS Code plugin, like your list view, global search, and find by snippet, but I'm gonna wrap it in a use case where I find myself leveraging pieces quite often for that extra boost in productivity. And that's when it comes to CI CD pipelines. So here I am, I'm in a CI CD pipeline file, and I know that I wanna reuse a snippet that Nathan, one of our other CI CD engineers, sent to me earlier in the week. In part one, you saw me save it, and now I'm actually gonna reuse it right here in this file. Starting with the list view, you can go ahead and see, similarly to VS Code, everything is grouped by language and ranked by recency. And right at the top, I have this reusable module composition step that when I hover over it, I can get a nice preview. And that looks to be useful. So all I have to do to get it into this file is simply drag and drop. And there it is, that bit of code reused. And I know this is what I'm looking for. This is standardized code. And the best thing is I didn't have to rewrite it from scratch. I might make some quick modifications, but that just gives you an example of how easy it is to just take something and reuse it. Moving on, IntelliJ has excellent capabilities when it comes to global search. So if I wanna find something, I'm just gonna go ahead and do shift shift. This is your classic global search in IntelliJ, and all I have to do here is type in some keywords. I'm gonna go ahead and use that promise resolution example that I've been using in the other demos. Resolution. And what you'll note is I have results from pieces right here, but this is not filtered down. So if I'm searching for something a bit more generic, like promise, I can actually just switch over to the pieces tab and only get pieces results. From there, I can go ahead and just click enter. And I'm looking at that snippet, all of its context, it's related collaborators and links and tags. And if I wanted to, I can actually config my settings to say, hey, insert this at caret or autocomplete it as I type. So global search is a really excellent experience in both VS Code and IntelliJ. Lastly, I think something that I use so often is the find by snippet. If I jump over to the file explorer, what you'll note is I'm in a mono repo. And the find by snippet is super useful because at scale, you might not know what you have in pieces. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you I was working on some Tailwind components and I'm gonna open up this element.dart. I know I have some things saved, but they were from a bit ago, and I really just don't know what they were called or what the code was. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select some code. Here we go. I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna search for related materials and pieces. Now, when I click that, what's gonna go on behind the scenes is we're gonna take that bit of code, and we're going to search pieces with NCS. So I have some related materials. I'm gonna go ahead and click that to look at them. And what you'll see over on the right is a whole bunch of things that I saved when I was initially working on this project from a couple months ago. And I can hover over them, take a look at the preview. There's a Tailwind header that I know I used a couple times. I can double click that to open. There it is, a beautiful preview of the entire code snippet. 
I can send this to someone, I can look at the context, we've got all the tags and related people and related links, and it actually looks like I already have a shareable link, so I must have used this with a colleague uh, when I was working on it. Okay, so what we just covered inside of VS Code and IntelliJ were some pretty powerful features. And the goal for us here at Pieces is to bring these capabilities as close to your workflow as possible. Having what you need, when you need it, right in your IDE is really the essence of seamless productivity. And if you're not able to find what you're looking for, you can of course just select some code, right click, save to Pieces, or in IntelliJ, drag and drop it right into the list view. So we're gonna move back over to the desktop app because there's some things that were going on behind the scenes that are related to your workflow activity that show you how Pieces proactively does work to save things that we identify as helpful even without you doing anything. So let's jump over there and take a look. All right, so we're back in the desktop app. And before I close out part two, I wanna to touch on one last thing. And that's how Pieces is an intelligent and proactive tool that does things for you without you doing anything at all. We talked a lot about how you can save, search, reference, and reuse, but this all starts with saving. And I'll tell you, a lot of developers don't actually realize they should have saved something until they realize they didn't save it. And that's the worst. So as Pieces uses on-device machine learning and sits across your workflow, we understand what you're looking at, what you're copying, you know, what you're referencing, and, uh, and we really can paint a picture of your entire processes. With that picture, we can actually determine code snippets that you don't have saved, but are complementary to the rest of your drive and go ahead and save them for you. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. I can jump back over to the gallery view here, and if you look at the bottom, you'll see this little autosave indicator. If I have the plugins installed and I'm just going about my workflow, Pieces will go ahead and see things that are relevant but that you're not saving explicitly, and it'll determine at what level of importance is this to you, and if it's a high level of importance, we're gonna go ahead and just save that automatically. If you go over to the right here, you'll note this was a fuzzy search that I saved myself, but this HTML snippet was saved 23 days ago with autosave. If I click autosave, you can actually get a picture of all the things that Pieces has put into my drive. And these are things, as I mentioned, that I didn't put in myself. So it saw that I was working on a website and it said, hey, you might need a meta tag, you might need a logo, you might need a, a rounded border and shadow image, uh, a view hero component, some wild stuff in here. But Pieces never ceases to surprise me with how smart it is in understanding what I'm doing. We've made it to the end of part two, the longest video in this multi-part series. Now, I know I've thrown a lot at you, but there's so much to cover when it comes to search, reference, and reuse within a developer's workflow. As a quick recap, we looked at global search and workflow activity in the desktop app, and then we jumped over to IntelliJ and VS Code to show you how we take these capabilities to the fringes of a developer processes with our plugins. I'm looking forward to part three where we're gonna jump into sharing. Now, as you can imagine, all the benefits that you have as an individual using pieces simply compound in a team environment and really compound in an enterprise one. Thanks for hanging and I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you over there.